Good morning. Welcome to another beautiful day in rural Montana. We got some clouds out. There's a little blue over that way, a little blue here, but may not be as beautiful as yesterday. But who cares? This is what we're going to do today. I hooked up this trailer last night to our Rivian R1S and uh, I got lucky. I had a ball mount that it seems to be about the right height so that the tongue is up from the ground about right. I encountered a little problem here. This pin here that goes through the receiver. I don't know if you can see it right there, this pin. Um, the one that I've been using for years was too short in this receiver. This receiver is a little beefier and I had to find another one that's about 3 16th of an inch longer, about three millimeters longer so that I could put this safety pin in to secure it. So, <clears throat> That is uh, something maybe you need to know that uh, the pin, if you tow that your pin there may be too short as well. So uh, check that out before you have to tow. <laughs> I luckily got a lot of stuff around. And now I can feel a few raindrops. Well, anyway, so this will be the first time towing with uh, the Rivian. So this trailer is a good 5,000 pounds. It's a cargo trailer. The box is about six feet or six and a half feet tall. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. All right, so I charged overnight to 90%. And uh, then this morning at about 6 a.m. or so, I uh, increased the limit to 100% to get it up to full. Now it's at 99% and it shows 144 miles. That is not very much. <laughs> um, so it's guesstimating. So we're in all purpose mode. We got the trailer stuff going here. Um, let's see. Oh, this keeps popping up. Trailer brake ready, hold the thumb control, blah, blah, blah to brake. Not sure why this keeps popping up or what this really supposed to mean. I guess I could press this and this would activate the trailer brakes. Um, also, since we're towing now, we get this here. Um, that is like emergency braking off, I guess. I haven't even looked at it yet, but I assume that's what it is or um, since this shows a car and that shows a car and the arrow points this way, I guess, I don't know. Maybe comment down below if you do know what it is. Um, I'll tow anyway without knowing. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure. I had this here all purpose. How do we do this? This way. Uh, there we get this. This was all lit up yesterday. Huh. Can't get into this. Unplug the vehicle to change drive modes. That is kind of interesting. So, um, all purpose, I guess that's where we were. <laughs> so, yeah, that's where we were and I just uh, hooked that up. And so it shows here towing efficiency, 0.3 miles per kilowatt hour. Distance towed was only 0.1 mile. Um, it, it, it's supposed to, I guess, estimate the weight here. Um, we'll see how that goes. That requires a little bit of driving. So I called the trailer handyman cargo and why can I not get anything to go here? This is odd. It doesn't even... Why does this not turn on? What's going on here? Oh, ha! <laughs> well, yeah, one should unplug. So let me go unplug this here real quick. All right, here we go. And now this pops up again. Hold right thumb wheel to brake or whatever. And we can see now the trailer shows back there. So that is pretty cool. Um, here is trailer brake. That's the gain, I guess. Um, or how much it applies brake. So if I go off the brake, then uh, it goes away and it says hold to brake. I don't know what that, is that supposed to be the brake pedal? This little thing there, or is that supposed to be the scroll wheel? I don't know. As I step on the brake, it goes to this and shows me how much it applies. Here I can adjust the, the brake gain. And this is basically just like any other brake controller. So uh, to adjust it, you should do the same thing. You should be on a dry paved road um, with no other traffic around. Go about 20 miles an hour and then uh, apply, which I guess it's the thumb, that's the scroll wheel here. Um, apply this to, to apply maximum brake gain. So that it would apply whatever you set there and you don't want the wheels to lock up on the trailer. So I haven't done that yet because I haven't driven anywhere and definitely for the first over a mile here, we got the dirt road, so we can't even do that, but that's okay. We'll be fine to get down the road here anyway. And yeah, so um, 
you can uh, add up to three trailers here and that is pretty cool because you can just go back to the preset so like the handyman cargo trailer uh, the one that is attached right now the weight doesn't change much it goes a few hundred pounds up or down but other than that it stays basically the same so it's pretty cool if you would have a travel trailer we could add that to it or the snowmobile trailer obviously we could add that to it so that is really nice there so well uh, I guess we better get going get out of here and uh, well we'll see how this goes um, what the efficiency will be so we're at 99% right now um, we got about 30-ish miles or so to go and there will be interstate we'll go probably about 55 miles an hour we'll see how this tows um, yeah I don't know at this point I don't know how the car will behave or the trailer will behave on this car so uh, I have to figure all this out let's go all right, so also here, um, side and rear sensors unavailable while towing. We got high battery charge, so regenerative braking is reduced. And we can see here, it turns all this off. So it's not, the sensors are not looking at anything except in the front. So you better know uh, your rear view mirrors, your trailer. And uh, well, as we go into reverse here again, same thing, nothing shows up at the front. And then you got your trailer view here. So, well, hopefully you know how to drive with the trailer anyway, then you don't really need all this. <laughs> it sure helps, but it's best if you don't need it. So, well, now let's go. It's pretty bouncy here. <laughs> that is pretty bouncy there. Holy moly. Well, let's see here. It's basically a tow mirror. Range updated based on sense trailer info. Okay, so it estimates the trailer to be 4,000 pounds. And so it says 186 miles. Um, I'm pretty sure we're not going 186 miles. <laughs> we'll figure that out. Uh, because the trailer is not 4,000 pounds. The trailer is definitely 5,000, probably 5,000 plus a little bit. So um, we'll see. It would be nice if I actually could tell the car how heavy the trailer is i don't know if that's a possibility yesterday when i tried to tap on it and input it that was not an option anyway so well we're going um we're doing about what we usually do here on the road so that's not too bad it feels okay um the bouncy thing <laughs> that's about the only thing when i had this uh, little dip here in the driveway there that was a little odd um Dodge truck never did that. Um, I did not tow this trailer, I think, with anything else up and down the driveway. So, yeah, but so far, so good. And uh, yeah, I'll keep you up to date. What's going on here? We're a little ways down the road now on the paved section here. Uh oh, we got some potholes here. Um, but yeah, it's been towing nicely. Um, the mirrors. They just suck. I'm sorry for towing. Um, you can see now as I'm turning, I can see behind me. But so I had to wait for the first turn to see that there's nobody behind me so I could do my trailer brake adjustment. And as you're going straight, you pretty much don't see anything behind you. So tow mirrors are needed. Uh, would be nice if Rivian would provide something or if those here would flip out like on the Dodge, they just flip up from the horizontal position to the vertical position. That would be nice for towing. Um, yeah, these are kind of worthless here. <laughs> I already actually adjusted them out a little bit more. I was literally just looking at the trailer in my normal setting. And oh, now I see a carway back there. I was just going to show you real quick. Um, 
how this works with the brake control adjustment here. So this board, it says hold to brake. I'm pretty sure this is the scroll wheel here that it's showing. Um, because as I press this scroll wheel in, it will apply brakes back there. And uh, that's what you need to do to uh, adjust this. So I gotta pull over up here real quick, let this car go by. And uh, then I'll show you real quick how that brake adjustment deal works. Because it's important that your brakes are adjusted properly. Yeah, we got some deer here. Let's see, where is it going? All right, off to the side. All righty, <clears throat> so yeah. As uh, soon as I can pull out up here somewhere and then I'll get back on and show you how to adjust the trailer brake. Okay, back on, I let the car pass. So my brake gain right now is set to five. And then right, it says there on the bottom of the dash, hold to brake is referring to this. And wow, it's just too easy to go too fast with this. So we're supposed to go about 20 to 25 and then you let go of the accelerator and you press. And you've probably seen there how, oh, now I went away, how the brake came up. And so that is what you do and you wanna feel that trailer slow you down, okay? <clears throat> you don't want to just feel the region of the car slow you down. Actually it would be probably best to set the region to low for us, it doesn't really matter because we're at 99 or 98% right now. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. We hardly have any regen. So you do want the trailer uh, to slow the vehicle down a little bit. You want to feel that. Um, but you don't want any wheels to lock up on the trailer. If you have wheels locking up on the trailer, you need to set this gain lower. If you don't feel the trailer slowing you down, you need to set this gain higher. And basically, when you do this test, you want it to be right there, uh, just one setting below where the wheels lock up. That would be where you want it to be. So now that said, it depends a little bit on your trailer brakes too. If your trailer brakes are properly maintained and in good shape, um, chances are that you will be able to lock up a wheel if your trailer brakes are not necessarily maintained and you don't know what shape they're in. You may not even know if they work, right? You may not get a wheel to lock up or sometimes uh, like when a trailer is fully loaded to its maximum capacity, then uh, the wheels may not be able to lock up either. It depends a little bit on how this all was designed. But in general, yes, you want to set that brake gain as high as possible because that is the maximum brake it will apply when you slam on the brake for emergency braking. Okay, this is not what it applies every time. Um, like it doesn't slam on the brake like that, but you want that to have to be at the maximum possible for emergency braking. If this is too low, in an emergency situation, you will lose feet of stopping distance and you may hit something or somebody and we don't want that. So it's important that you adjust that. I've been towing trailers for many, many years with many different brake controllers, all kinds of vehicles, all kinds of trailers. So it is extremely important that you have good brakes on the trailer and that they're properly adjusted mechanically back there as well as electrically or electronically up here um, in the vehicle. So extremely important, that can make several feet difference in uh, stopping distance. And it is so, so important. Many people uh, don't think about that. Um, another thing here, this car, this the Derivian is heavier than the trailer. So that always is basically to your benefit when you're towing a trailer, when the, the tow vehicle is heavier than the trailer. Uh, so this Rivian is almost 7,000 pounds. So the trailer is just over 5,000 pounds. So we have almost 2,000 pound difference here, which is not too bad. That will help with uh, uh, the trailer towing, keeping the trailer stable. But still, 
very important adjust your brakes properly doesn't matter how heavy your vehicle is or how heavy your trailer is if the trailer brakes are not adjusted properly you will uh, have a longer stopping distance so all right so far so good um, we're now going down this uh, this is basically the frontage road the highway is over to our left behind the trees hidden and now we're going about 45 here so it's towing pretty good I'm pretty happy with it so far so we'll see we'll uh, go on this uh, frontage road here for a few more miles and then we get on to the interstate <clears throat> and then we'll go a little higher speed not much higher I will probably test it out but uh, We'll probably go uh, to test up to 65, maybe 70, but then cruising along, probably no more than 65. I have to see how it feels, so. Well, I'll let you know once we get there. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I did test it and it, it, yeah, 70 is pretty much, well, it's top and you have to be extremely focused. It's, uh, yeah, no. Um, 65 is a decent speed that you probably can hold but it's still tough so now I settled for 60 and if you see there it says manually brake for towing so I turned on the cruise control and it takes away adaptive cruise control I didn't know that and it seems a little bit odd um, I mean adaptive cruise control is as you're approaching a car in front of you that goes slower than what your speed is set to that it will just slow down and uh, so it seems to take this away. I'm not sure or if it just uh, takes the emergency braking away um, But the, the sign looks different here. The little icon looks different now than it looks with uh, the regular cruise control. So I Suspect there is no adaptive cruise control, which is this thing thing right there Well, this is I think this is emergency braking off, but yeah, I don't know um, <laughs> Well, if you know if it uh, takes away adaptive cruise control or not, leave a comment down below. I don't know at this point for sure. Uh, it's the first time we're towing and, well, there's not much traffic here. We're out in rural Montana, so... <laughs> and uh, our exit is coming up, so I'll better put the camera down. All right, we have arrived. And uh, so it's only 23.2 miles, one mile per kilowatt hour. <laughs> It still says here 186 at 100%, uh, but that is not possible. I think we got, what, about 130 kilowatt hours here. So at one mile per kilowatt hour, this would be only 130 miles. So yeah, doesn't look so good for us to make our trip that where I need this trailer, <clears throat> going to our cozy cabin, to our vacation rental, because we got to drive from home to Butte there's no chargers in between. Actually, there is chargers in Missoula. So I could potentially make it if I charge to 100% at home, drive to Missoula, uh, top off there and then go slow to Butte potentially, but it doesn't look, really look too great at this point. Um, towing wise, it was good. It's just, you can't go fast. Trailers, uh, the trailer is pulling on this and this is a relatively short trailer. Yes, it's heavy for its length, but so you wanna be careful and I don't know, maybe it's just my feeling too. I've been towing with our Dodge Dually for a long time, which is uh, a little lighter actually than this one here, uh, than the Rivian, but it has a longer wheelbase and it has dual rear wheels. So this really helps to keep uh, the, the vehicle stable. So, well, I gotta do some work here. <laughs> That's the reason I came here. It's not just that I'm towing for fun or whatever. <clears throat> But uh, yeah, I gotta do what I gotta do here. We're, by the way, we're down to 83%. We started at 99. So that is what, 16% that we lost here on uh, 23 miles. One mile per kilowatt hour is not very encouraging though. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, also the motors warmed up pretty decent uh, since we have this gauge here. 127, 122. The battery is 89. Um, when I first looked at the battery, I think it was like 87 and the motors were like 64. So yeah, it is a little strainful, a little stress on this vehicle to tow, obviously. Um, I don't know that they necessarily had towing in mind. 
when uh, they built these vehicles. We'll see. Uh, this this was really just a short trip with uh, not really any elevation change. Um, so we'll see. Well, we obviously got to go back and then we know more because if you go one way and you have the wind one direction and whatever elevation gain or elevation loss, then you go back, you pretty much equalize for that. So we'll be here for about an hour and uh, the battery probably will, I don't know, maybe this will cool down a little bit and then it's more equal of a test, but we'll see. So, well, I'll check back in with you when I'm going back. All right, job completed. It's time to get going again. And uh, so we are still at 83%. Um, let's see here. So the motors cooled down a bit. The batteries stay pretty much the same. So no change there. And uh, well, here it still shows all the same. So we had 23.2 miles to get here. So we'll be about 46.4, I guess, by the time we come home. Um, I wonder if this is gonna drop even more or going to stay the same. Interestingly, this did not change even though it has the towing efficiency now. So that's kind of odd. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, there's, I guess there's no way to actually tell the vehicle, tell the Rivian how heavy the trailer is because it's definitely heavier than 4,000 pounds. So yeah, well, um, let's drive back and see how that goes. Okay, something funny just happened or I just noticed it. So I'm just uh, two minutes into the drive. I'm still here on a road not even to back to the interstate yet so but it uh, reassessed the trailer weight <laughs> for some reason i don't know i never unhooked the trailer so but it reassessed it and said it's now three thousand pounds and i got now 199 miles range at um 100 percent which again just that number the range at 100 percent looking at the towing efficiency i'm sorry even yeah it went up to 1.1 miles because yeah we're going really slow right now uh back to the interstate so obviously we have better efficiency but even at 1.1 miles per kilowatt hour on about 130 kilowatt hour pack i believe it is well it's impossible to get 199 miles it's still gonna be just like about 130 miles or so so um uh, Rivian's software is uh, definitely lacking here. That is <laughs> definitely wrong. Now, let me see here. It's the three dots. Does that do something? Oops. Oh. Ah, come on. No, it doesn't do anything. Let's see if I can stop here real quick. It's a little... Oh, there it popped up. Oh. All right. Oh, that's just to reset it. Okay, I looked at that at some other point last night already. Um. So doesn't really uh, help if I reset it because it uh, I mean just these two numbers don't match and, and that doesn't make any sense so Rivian needs to fix this um, based on this efficiency they they can't give me this number regardless of the trailer weight so and it doesn't make sense that it would uh, recalculate or figure out again what the trailer weight is after I did not unhook the trailer I mean I guess one could have unloaded it but uh, I don't know it, it's definitely well now it's 2,000 pounds off in trailer weight so <laughs> and the trailer weight's one thing but this here is hugely wrong so all right well another interesting thing I noticed it's biased to the front with power at low speeds you can see that there's way more blue in the front than the back but then at high speeds on the interstate it's uh, the other way around it's more even or actually a little bit more towards the back so that's just interesting i don't know that it matters at all <laughs> it's uh it's just the fact that that's what it does but uh it, it doesn't really matter i mean whatever it doesn't matter to me <laughs> as long as it works and uh so obviously uh, towing so far has been great and towing with an electric vehicle is never an issue in regards to the the weight you have to accelerate back there that is always super easy so we're getting back on the interstate and so now you can see it's more even front to rear actually a little bit more on the rear as we're accelerating and gaining speed here so i think i have to read the manual <laughs> i gotta figure this thing out here with the cruise control um the manual brake during towing okay i guess I'm, I'm not sure that's maybe just about emergency braking being disabled but 
Um, as I engaged the cruise control, it went immediately to the speed limit of 80 miles an hour and it immediately started speeding up and there's no way I can safely go 80 miles an hour with this trailer here. And so I had to, well, with the button here, that is how you lower uh, or increase the speed. So as you press here or there, it's either side one, uh, this goes down here and then this goes up, right? So I wanted to go 65 and I was going 65 and I enabled the cruise control and the vehicle started accelerating rapidly. And uh, I was kind of going all over the place because there's some wind here too and uh, not very safe. I mean, I don't know. So since they obviously disabled the, the emergency braking for sure, then maybe they should also um, take over or there should be a way to take the current speed that I'm going rather than accelerating up to the speed limit or at least give me a few seconds to adjust the speed. Oops. So I'm not sure. So I gotta go back to the manual and guess and figure that one out um, if you know what's going on or if, if you know how to choose uh, the correct speed or the same speed I'm going rather than it accelerating and going up high to 80. Uh, let me know down below in the comments. I don't know at this point. I mean, I just get in cars and drive. Uh, they should be simple enough usually for us to figure this out. So we're getting off the interstate again anyway. And as soon as we're going slower, you can see the bias to the front for reaching and accelerating. It's kind of interesting. Um, and here, nothing has really changed. I mean, other than the distance we have been towing. <laughs> so, um, on this trip, most of it is on just regular roads at slow speeds. Everything is pretty slow here, um, except when going on the interstate. So, but the shortest stretch here was basically on the interstate. I think just about 10 miles of the trip is on the interstate. So that makes about 13 plus miles at very slow speeds and uh, that obviously makes for good efficiency and so that's our towing efficiency efficiency still shows 1.1 miles per kilowatt hour um yeah which i have a feeling if we would be on the interstate for longer that would drop more and probably go below one mile per kilowatt hour uh, so yeah, basically thinking about the trip we would like to do, it gets extremely tight or at least slow. <laughs> I think we would have to go no more than 50, maybe 55 to make it to Butte, even with topping off in Missoula. And the topping off in Missoula um, would be relatively inconvenient because, well, yeah, Tesla, um, superchargers are available to Rivian. Rivian said a big old announcement, but they were kind of lying to us because um, no, not all Tesla superchargers are available to us. Tesla put this put a post out at the same time as Rivian announced this here a couple days ago, and Tesla's post clearly says select superchargers are available. And when I looked on the Rivian map, the superchargers in Missoula were not available to Rivian. And uh, some of these select superchargers that are available are actually the Magic Dock kind, which has been available to Rivian already, which has been available to other uh, CCS cars, well, since the Magic Dock was on there, basically. So, um, yeah, Rivian has given us some uh, false information. Also, we don't have an adapter. They, they tell us we should wait for their adapter and whatever. Um, I did go ahead and order one. I waited five years to get this car. I don't want to wait another who knows how long um, to get uh, this adapter before I can take advantage of the superchargers that are available to us. But currently there are not many of these superchargers available to us as of what, we're a day or two after they announced this. So yeah, Rivian said, oh, now you got 15,000 chargers or whatever. Well, sorry, the supercharging network is not completely available to Rivian yet, so. <laughs> and that doesn't help because then in Missoula, the superchargers, both of them are right off the interstate, while the Electrify America, the CCS kind, is a couple miles down the road at Walmart. So pretty inconvenient to get off the interstate and haul this trailer down a busy road to the Walmart parking lot to charge. So 
Well, so much for that. <laughs> anyway, we're uh, going along here. It works pretty good at slow speeds. Um, we're now down to 75%. We lost what we used, we didn't lose. We, we used about 16% going there. We were at 83. So that makes what, uh, um, 73, 67%, I guess, we should be arriving at home. Then we were even going there and back. So, well, so far everything's good. Um, definitely notice the difference that the Rivian has the short wheelbase and the trailer kind of tucks on it left to right, pulls it around, I can notice that. But I think that is uh, to be expected with this vehicle uh, as well as any like half ton pickup truck or any other SUV. Um, half ton SUV is probably basically the same. So yeah, well, pretty cool. And uh, well, I guess I'll see you at home unless uh, something interesting comes up. Back home shows 69%. So um, I guess we did a little bit better coming back home. Um, but if we're looking at this here, so this, I, I was a little bit late. It shows 45 miles there. We're about a mile, 1.2 miles off here. This is the actual distance. I was late resetting this. But if you look at the average speed there, it's only 36 miles per hour. So I was going relatively slow, only about one third of this distance. So only about, uh, what, 15 miles um, of this distance or maybe 20 miles were on the interstate and I was not going very fast. That was basically between uh, 60 and I would say 67 miles per hour on the interstate. So going relatively slow. And interestingly, again, this even increased to 200 miles, but it's impossible at 1.1 mile per kilowatt hour. If uh, I'm going at 1.1 mile per kilowatt hour, it, if, I don't have a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack. <laughs> so yeah, that that is this year sucks for that part. This should not be like that. That should definitely be better. Um, and yes, we were going relatively slow. And so if we're actually going longer distance on the interstate, this whole thing will change, and uh, it will be much worse. <laughs> so yeah, um, we might try to make that 150 mile trip with uh, charging up here, going to Missoula, topping off and then see if we can make it to Butte. And uh, well, there's not really any other option. If we can't make it to Butte, we would have to, well, maybe there's a campground where we could do some level two charging with the mobile charger, but so we kind of would have to make it. <clears throat> but for this towing experience, I mean, uh, it was to be expected. It's an electric vehicle, just as we told with our Model S. It just goes, there's no problem with that. You don't feel that you're accelerating the weight behind you. Um, I could definitely feel the weight uh, tugging a little bit, so, but it is a relatively short car. Um, another thing I noticed, and uh, well, let's go look at it real quick in the back, is, um, so if we're looking at this here, so the, the distance from the center of the wheel to basically where the ball is right there, that distance determines um, or makes a difference as you're backing up or as you're driving forward, how far uh, or how close the trailer is following the car or how much the trailer actually cuts in a turn. So this distance here is relatively short. The hitch, the receiver where you put your ball mount in is under there, all right? It's right there. So this here only comes out a little bit. So that, with the receiver being under there, that cuts down on that distance. The longer this distance is, the more this trailer will be following the car going around the turn going forward. And that makes it a lot easier. So right now, compared to our truck um, over here, so right here, we have a longer distance from mid wheel to where the hitch is right at the bumper edge here and then this comes out to here. We have a longer distance. So um, this trailer, follows this truck really good. Also, as you're backing up, because of the longer distance there, you have to turn your wheel less to get the trailer to react. Here with the Rivian, I had to turn my wheel more for the trailer to react. And commonly the problem is once it starts going, then all of a sudden it goes quite a lot. So um, it's getting used to it, but um, yeah, it, it would almost be nice if that hitch would be out a little further, then the trailer would follow a little better. Um, also, it is all relatively close here. Obviously, the further in the hitch is, the closer your uh, jack, tongue jack comes to the vehicle. But there is enough room here 
to open this. So that works there. The problem is here. Let's see if we bring this down. All right, there we go. So right now we're sitting on the handle. So if you would have a different jack with a different handle, that would work. And it's almost where it needs to be, but it just sits on the handle. So um, if this would just be a few more inches out, we could open the tailgate properly too. So this is not a, an uncommon problem with many vehicles um, that hitches are hidden under there because people want to hide them. And then we put the cover on, which is really nice if you don't tow. But if you're towing, uh, this is a little bit of a disadvantage. So um, overall, really good experience. Um, happy with it. And uh, yeah, now I just got to figure out if you want to attempt our trip with 150 miles with this thing on it. It would be nice if we could do though that. Um, it will be uh, time-wise about as long as going with the truck. Um, maybe actually it will be a little bit longer because obviously of the charging time. Um, but just the driving time will be a little bit longer too because I think I have to go a bit slower with this than I used to go with the truck. So, so um, in the EV towing world, we're, with this vehicle, we're not really... Uh, there yet it works it would work good it will work for my local towing here that will work fine um anything like we did today 50 miles 70 miles or so 80 miles is probably okay but then after that um can get a little tricky so but yeah today i'm pretty happy with it um expected about one mile per kilowatt hour anyway so this is uh about what it is so <laughs> But yeah, overall pretty happy so far with the vehicle. I mean, uh, I will keep pointing out the negatives because I can, unlike many uh, people that review cars that get a press car. Um, also many people that didn't have to pay this amount of money for a vehicle, they don't really care about some things and they maybe leave some of the nitpicking out. Um, but heck, we paid a lot of money for this vehicle and we have to live with this for the next 10 years it's not just the press car we have um so i i can certainly point out the bad things and that doesn't mean i'm i'm uh, hating on rivian or anything no that is just facts that i'm stating so or constructive criticism for rivian maybe do it better right <laughs> and a lot of the things i guess uh that they done a little weird on this one has have been improved in the r2 like well, they overdid it, the two with the glove box. They put two glove boxes in the R2 and here they don't have one. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So yeah, but anyway, so far towing so good. Uh, 5,000, a good 5,000 pounds, 19 foot cargo trailer. Box is about six and a half feet tall. Um, we get just around about a mile per kilowatt hour. But remember in on this trip, the speed was very low at about 37 miles per hour average. We just had... Um, about a third of the miles um, at a higher speed. So yeah, we got to do more towing with it and see and go from there. So um, if you want to know more about this thing and the towing part of it, make sure you are subscribed. Please give us a thumbs up for this video and any of our other videos that you watch. Get that YouTube algorithm stimulated so it shows those videos to many more other people. Well, in any event, thank you for watching. Goodbye.